Well, hello again folks, this is Lee, Virtual Airline Pilot, welcoming you to another review video. Uh, good afternoon to uh, all my subscribers and to new viewers. We are in the UK, uh, several miles off the coast of Cornwall in fact, and you are looking at St. Mary's Airport on the island of St. Mary's in the Scilly Isles, which are off the coast of Cornwall. This is a new scenery by Airsoft um, and they've completely redeveloped the island with the topography and everything for Flight Simulator 2020. Um, 4K textures throughout, all sorts of bits and pieces. I've had a look around the island so far. It looks really nice. It's pretty close to reality. Um, so the download is by way of a zip file, 61.7 megs. And when it's installed, finally, it installs to 1.13 gigabytes. Now, I'll put some details up, but essentially, um, installation and purchase for this is very different. I purchased this off Sim Market, and basically, you download a zip, uh, a zip file that um, gives you um, Airsoft One, which is basically like a piece of management software. It's rather similar to the old Airsoft Manager or similar to Contrail or other such managers used by various, some other um, developers. Basically you install that and that becomes your library if you will. Um, and you install the software through it. So in my case I purchased it from um, SimMarket, downloaded the zip file and downloaded a, a PDF document that told me all about what to do. Um, you run this, the contents of the zip file, which is an executable to install Airsoft One on your computer. And I'm, but you can install it pretty much anywhere. You don't have to install it into C. Once you've installed it, um, make sure you take a copy of the serial key, which in my case I got from Airsoft, because there's an option in the Airsoft One software for you to install by serial. The moment you put the serial in the Airsoft One software recognizes what it is you bought and brings it to the forefront and allows you to install it and again allows you to choose where to go. Um, I will do a little um, tutorial if I can possibly fit this in for you to see that. So it's just to say that the installation is slightly different to what you'd expect um, instead of just downloading an executable or a zip file from Sim Market or from the Airsoft shop um, it's installed through a different piece of software. Prices, well it's €11.95 um, if you get it from the Airsoft shop. I think it's a little more from Sim Market. That equates to $13.82 in US or £10.14 UK. Um, these are um, without tax. You must add tax or VAT depending on the country you live in and where you purchase it. So, St. Mary's Airport, Echo Golf Hotel Echo, on the island of St. Mary's in the Scilly Isles, a group of islands off the southwest coast of Cornwall in the United Kingdom. This is by Airsoft. Let's go through a little bit of history for you. St. Mary's Airport is located one mile or 1.9 kilometers east of the town of Hugh, spelt H-U-G-H, -H, on the island of St. Mary's in the Isles of Scilly. It's the only airport serving all of the islands and is owned by the Duchy of Cornwall Estate, as basically His Royal Highness Prince Charles, and is operated by the Council of the Isles of Scilly. The airport has existed since 1937, and in September of that year, Ollie Air Services operated the first air service between St. Mary's and Land's End, flying the de, de, flying de Havilland Dragons from what was then St. Mary's Golf Course. In 1938, Great Western and Southern Airlines took over Ollie's Air Services and continued the service right through World War II. They replaced the Dragons with Rapides, de Havilland Rapides. Later, High Cross Farm was converted for use by British European Airways who, in 1947, took that service over. 1949, a control tower and passenger wedging room were completed at the airport as well. From May 1964, Sikorsky S61 helicopters replaced the Rapides on the route from Land's End, actually flying into the new Penzance Airport. Service was flown by what became British Airways helicopters, and in the summer months, two aircraft were operating between the two locations. 
From 1961, a small variety of airlines, including Bryman Airways, Mayflower Air Services and British West Point Airlines, operated services into and out of St. Mary's with a variety of small aircraft. By 1993, Bryman Airways was using the de Havilland Twin Otter. 1975, a new terminal had been built and was opened by the then Prime Minister Harold Wilson. By 1991, the airport had sported a new 2,000 foot runway, or 600 metres, and it was made of asphalt. By October 2012, after some 48 years of flying, the helicopter service from Land's End ceased operations, leaving the eyes of Scilly Skybus as the sole remaining air link for the islands. May 2013, the Isles of Scilly Steamship Company and the Council of the Isle of Scilly submitted a joint bid for finance from the European Regional Development Fund for improvements to the terminal, new lighting and navigation systems and runway resurfacing together with runway resurfacing at Land's End Airport as well. In May 2014, the European Commission gave its approval. The terminal at the airport open all year round whilst the airport is in operation, it has a buffet, toilets as well as access to wheelchairs upon request. The airport is also used as a landing area for some emergency service such as HM Coast Guard Search and Rescue, they're based out of Newquay, and the Cornwall Air Ambulance, as well as being the administrative base for the eyes of Scilly Fire and Rescue Service. A public footpath passes within just a few metres of the southern end of the runway and is closed by warning lights and bells a few minutes before takeoff or when a landing is due. And to be honest, I'm having looked quickly at the scenery, I can't see those lights, so that is missing from the scenery. Runways available at St Mary's are uh, runway 0927, which is uh, 1722 feet long or 522 metres and is also asphalt. The main runway, runway 1432, is 2277 feet after it was extended, 694 meters, and is also asphalt. Uh, there's also a helipad runway, runway 1836, at 1312 feet, or 399 meters, which is grass, and again, is not shown in the scenery, um, nor is it actually marked on the um, Navigraph charts. But according to my research sources, the runway supposedly still exists. It may be just a case of a helicopter takes off in a certain direction. Passenger figures, well we've got figures for 2019. Um, the airport had 93,927 passengers and they had over 12,546 aircraft movements. So there you go, some um, history and details of this little, small little airport on this island, or group of islands, there's a significant number of islands, just a few miles off the coast, southwest coast of Cornwall. Um, it's a lovely scenery, um, I really like these kind of products. Um, some of you may remember I did a, um, a review of the Pearl Islands out in the, um, off the coast of Panama. And these islands basically are very similar, just beautiful to look at and probably great fun to fly around. Lots of little things to see. So let's get down and dirty and have a close look at this and um, we can see what we can see. See what sort of a job Airsoft have made of this little airport off the coast of the UK mainland. Okay, so here we are on the main ramp here at St. Mary's Airport. Um, it's just after midday and Airsoft have stated in their blurb that um, they have random aircraft appearing at the airport here and there, but basically um, that are in keeping with the airport. airport. And we can see um, a de Havilland Twin Otter there to the left, which we'll go and have a look at. As you can see, it's... Um, done out in the livery of um, Skybus Isle of Scillies, which is the only air service currently still operating on a regular service between the islands and the mainland. There's the main terminal building, and we've got a Cessna sitting there at the moment. Let's go up a little bit close and have a look. So the outside detail here is really nice, as you can see the concrete's been done nicely. The rails, the building looks um, 
clean and correct from what I can see in the photographs I've managed to track down and as you can see through the glass there you can see the interior has been done we'll have a look at that in a minute and coming to the side of the building there you've got the um, trash bins and there you can see a couple of people yeah, they, do, they do say that they've got some people they don't mention whether they're animated or not I certainly didn't see any animated people um, when I looked through the scenery there's another view looking inside the terminal building and looking at the people we've just looked at nice um, seating area lovely in the summer here's the back end of the terminal the land side part if you will Again, a couple of vehicles, nicely done, properly positioned. Building's very clean. And again, you can see through the glass and we've got a postman standing there. And just turning away from the main building there from looking across, you can see we've got um, solar panels there um, and other bits and pieces. And there's a barrier um, to allow vehicles or people to go into the air side part of the ramp. And a few um, covers are little motorhome parked there and the odd building in bits and pieces um, unfortunately we've got uh, Microsoft's own static um, trucks going all over the grass which is something they wouldn't do so we'll have a look inside the control tower and then we'll look inside the main building so here's our man on duty inside the control tower all the screens are off but as you can see you've got chairs and you've got some development inside the uh, control tower here bless him he doesn't look too happy today but uh, there you go he's on duty and um, at the moment things look pretty quiet for him nice little look out over the ramp there from within the control tower there's a really good view of everything that's going on and um, nice to see the uh, UK wigwags the little lights there that um, denote access to the live runway So let's go down and have a look inside the terminal building. So just looking out to the land side there where you can see the vehicles parked and you've got the doors on the right there. Nice choice of carpet too. And there you can see the glass pane directly ahead. And a couple of baggage drops. And the main lounge seating area where you've got um, some nice static people and this guy looks suspiciously like our um, tower controller but uh, no problems so it looks okay a little restaurant there coffee shop tea bar call it what you will clock up on the wall there very nicely done and just looking from the other direction there And some comfy chairs and looking to the door there that goes out to the terrace where you've got the outdoor picnic tables for you to sit on in the sunshine just another view outside and just looking in through the window so you can see the interior through the glass which is a nice touch and a little look at the airside area where people would come out through the doors and be led out to the aircraft so just looking across to the other side of the main runway there you can see runway 1432 the main runway and you've got a couple of uh, general aviation aircraft bits and pieces over here on the other side with a hangar got a helicopter pad here and a helicopter pad there So here's the road that goes around the back of runway 14 where there's supposed to be a warning light um, and a, obviously you get an audible siren but there's supposed to be a warning light to stop people um, or anybody coming along this road bit here when there's a landing or a, or a departure going on runway 14 but that seems to be missing from the scenery but again not a problem it does look beautiful looks really nice So apart from the airport, you see you've also got the town of Hugh just over here 
on the right side some beautiful beaches um, and some lovely lagoons and coves developed here the coastline is beautifully done um, this is a place to take your helicopter or light aircraft up or even a, um, an amphibious aircraft and go and have a little explore around it's beautiful so as well as a nice little airport you've got one hell of an island to explore so this is the main town of Hugh and you can see you've got the bay main little harbour here with boats and various things and what looks like a small tanker beautiful and you look in the distance you've got many of the other islands I haven't gone and explored this far maybe I'll do a video about this whole area we'll see but as you can see a beautiful island beautiful another beautiful location in the simulator for you to go exploring so let's have a look at um, what this looks like at dusk see if there's any lighting and just have a look at the general ambience of the area at dusk okay 10 to 7 in the evening and as you can see the runways are well lit and well defined the identifier lights are there there's also um, high intensity lighting coming into the main runway 1432 and as you can see from here we can see that the terminal area is lit up and there's the harbour the beautiful town of Hugh all lit up and splendid in the sunset so just looking at the airside part of the terminal here you see you've got the blue ba airfield boundary lights you can see the wigwags better now um, and they light up on the concrete really well and you've got um, ambient lighting airside of the terminal not an awful lot but just enough there we get a little bit closer you can see that the inside is um, sufficiently lit and here you've got three lights here which give again the right amount of light for this particular area so that's well done and the control tower is not lit so just looking at the signage there you can see the wigwags working reflecting into the grass um, the two signs either side there are adequately lit but I don't think they're really lit per se um, you're just getting reflected light off the uh, wigwags and again there's no reflection into the grass from any lighting here I don't really see any lighting at all on this and again if you look at the one on the opposite side we can see the only light you're getting is from the wigwags so if we have a look at the intersection here runway 2709 and 1432 again you see you've got the signage but the lighting is only provided by the wigwags but the runway lighting generally is good so we're looking to, uh, to the approach onto runway 32 there and you can see you've got end identifier lights one seems to be brighter than the other not sure really why and you've got vasoids or pappies um, which look a little bit off kilter to me but uh, might be something worth trying in the Cessna see what it looks like and in case you haven't noticed we've got a sloped runway there's a good example showing the slope in the runway so it could be fun could be fun trying to land here <laughs> beautiful at sunset right so let's have a look at night time right it's 8 p.m. and as you can see total darkness one thing I'm not sure of I'm not sure if this airport operates 24 hours I can't find any information about that I suspect that it doesn't um, although the runways and bits and pieces are well lit, certainly in the scenery, um, I'm not sure I'd like to attempt a landing here on such a short runway in the total darkness. But anyway, we're having a look just to have a look and see what it looks like. Once again, really adequate night lighting on the whole terminal building and you can see through the glass. Uh, lovely, comes to life really nice. Um, as these airports often do at this time of the day there's a little look from the land side showing the vehicles parked and we still have our friends our die-hard um, plane spotters out there in the uh, out in the corner there looking to see what might be coming in 
Actually, I've just had a thought. This airport is used by Emergency Services HM Coast Guard, which really need to operate round the clock, so there's a good chance that um, this would be open for those movements. Other than that, I can't see um, any other reason why it might be open at night. So just an overview of the airport there, and you can see um, the night lighting is fine, looks lovely, but it is very dark, not somewhere I would really like to fly into at night, particularly without any um, navigational guidance. There is an NDB approach um, to this airport, and that's pretty much about it. So let's go to the dawn. So 7.30 in the morning there you can see um, the sun is not yet above the horizon but the uh, sun's rise is coming up and we can see the airport. You could probably get in um, in, this, in this light and again we still have the terminal lit quite nicely. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise out there. And again looking towards the main town of Hugh and you can see there to the left We've got some boats in the harbour and uh, some other bits and pieces for you to explore. So let's bring the sun up a bit more. So here we are, 20 past 8 in the morning, looking towards the, the town of Hugh again and the main harbour. Looks really lovely. And how's that for a view? There's the airport. Very rugged coastline as you can see. They've done a wonderful job with the coastline. Um, I really can't fault that. It looks beautiful. Again, stunning place to go and visit. Um, and the airport looks nice in the rising sun. So just another little overview of the island there. That you can see boats in the harbour, various little harbours, beaches around. And that's just on this island. And as you can see, wherever you look, there are islands, small islands and large islands all over the place part of this group, little group of islands that um, exists just a few miles off the coast of Cornwall in the United Kingdom. So there you are folks, a quick review of the uh, island of St Mary and the airport of St Mary which is in just, just literally a mile away from the town of Hugh. Um, it's in the Isles of Scilly, a group of islands um, are looked after by the Duchy of Cornwall, located several miles off the Cornish coast in the southwestern UK. Uh, new scenery by Airsoft, around about 11 euros. Um, do I like it? Yep, I do. Um, these are the sort of sceneries I love to see, especially when they're close to home in the UK. They're actually not really close to home. I live in Sussex, so this is miles away, but it's home ground. It's the UK. Um, and um, Having becoming re relatively good with a helicopter, this is a place to go look in and go exploring. And all you guys who like to fly the float planes, I should imagine there's plenty for you to explore here. Lots of beaches and um, very nice rendition of the airport with no real major problems. Um, again, the only thing I can't find out really is whether this is sort of actually open for movements for 24 hours. I doubt that it is during the hours of darkness, except for emergency use. Um, it matches the charts fairly well, um, although I can't really find the old runway 1836 used by the helicopters. That's listed, um, but it's not on a chart and it's not in the scenery. And the only other little anomaly is that um, you don't have the warning lights by the road at the beginning of runway 14 there to stop the traffic and people going past. But those are just nothing really to worry about. The scenery is stunning. Price is really nice. Not sure yet whether I enjoy, I'm going to enjoy using the Airsoft One software. It's just yet another piece of software you have to install on your computer. But um, the plus side is that um, actually all of your Airsoft products that you bought for both Flight Sim 2020 and P3D, you can actually uninstall them and then reinstall them using Airsoft One and use that as a manager for all of your products. So that could be really useful for those people who like to be able to do that kind of thing. And again, um, having the ability to choose where you want to install the Airsoft One software and choose where you want to install the scenery. So you can install it outside the community folder. It places a link there 
I mean that is also a bonus point too. So hats off to Airsoft, um, another really nice little scenery. I'm pleased I got it and yes I did buy it, this wasn't given to me. Um, as usual the thoughts, uh, I, uh, um, thoughts that I pass on to you here are my own. Um, really really nice, thoroughly enjoy it um, for you to go and get it, I thoroughly recommend it. So thanks for joining me in this little review, hope you enjoyed it, hope you found, found it useful. Um, my name is Lee, Virtual Airline Pilot, saying bye for now and the end of another review. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.